Hey everybody, it's Ryan once again, and we're here with the first episode of Monster Radio. I'm with Ashley Hill. How you doing, Ashley? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing. It's cold out here and kind of windy, but you know, don't it's all right. No, you can't start that, Mister. I'm in Arizona. Oh I'm, no, I'm not no. hearing it. Are, you know what? I'm going to correct myself. It's cold for Arizona. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so why don't you tell people what's going on with you, Ashley? Um. Uh. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? What's going on with me? Just uh, yeah, the weather you're going through, and oh, you know, tell us about oh. the expo. You, you just want to hear about my life? Oh, yeah, oh. we do. Oh, We're well, interested in that. This, wow, my boyfriend wants to know how I am. Huh? Interesting. Um, <laughs> weird. You want me to talk? You sure? Smart um, ass. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm uh, I'm I'm fresh off this. Yeah, you're right. This paranormal expo that I just did, and and I, you know, we had a table there for the. On Wednesdays, we talk weird show. And then, you know, of course, I was a speaker there talking about. Can you guess what I talked about? Oh, the Mothman. I, I'm going to guess definitely you the know? Mothman. You know, I heard this rumor that you're really interested in the Mothman and injured cold and that uh, that bridge collapse, which I know nothing about, by the way. <laughs> it was just, it was a stab in the dark, you know? You know I'm good at that. <laughs> That's a, that's a pretty lucky stab. Yes, that's what I talked about. Um, no, it was it was good. It was fun. Um, you know, definitely the first of of you know many many public appearances. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, and I, I've been doing these events and things for a minute, um, but I've just kind of been going as a spectator. And uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, I kind of still prefer to be a spectator. I mean, I liked talking. Um, I just don't like to have a table. I, I didn't like that. Um, Why is that? Much, but because I only I can only stay in the one place, and and I go to these <laughs> things because I, I like to talk to people and I like to move around and 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 not that people weren't coming up and talking to us, they were. Um, but I, you know I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know as 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 I continue to <clears throat> perfect my craft, uh, you know <laughs> how it does in the future. But uh, yeah, and it's cold, and we are getting ready to have uh, snow mageddon or ice ice mageddon or. <laughs> You know, I like those type, names. Some type of snow apocalypse, um, you know, winter, oh. <laughs> winter, not so wonderland. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're just dropping these jokes left and right, aren't you? I know, right? I'm, I'm good at it, I guess. But you um, know what, though, it's yeah. it's perfect that you're talking about the snow and the winter weather, especially with the conversation we're going to have here tonight. Oh, mm, yeah, we're going to be talking about the Wendigo. <gasps> Ooh, my favorite topic. Ooh. Right. Ryan, you know something about the Wendigo? I know a little bit here and there. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. know, I think the deep dive kind of paid off. I mean, it probably didn't, but, you know, well, I'm hoping I, it does. I mean, we can definitely let the audience decide what they think about it. Um, you oh, know, absolutely. So you've been doing this, uh, this Wendigo thing for a long time. I mean, how long have you been doing this for? You know, I started a couple of years ago. It was just kind of like a loose interest back in the day, but... As I started seeing there's more and more stuff that's convoluted, I'm just kind of going, wait a minute, you know, somebody's got to look into this a bit more. So, okay. yeah, I started my deep dives and one rabbit hole led into another, into another, into another. And well, here we are <laughs> talking about it on the show. Mm-hmm. Wow. But before we begin that topic, though, I should tell everybody that, yes, this is a new show. This is going to be me and Ashley show. So she will be a regular co-host on this, though. I don't know. Regular. She's not really regular. She's weird. But you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, Ryan. (laughs) (laughs) Now, now. (laughs) That was unnecessary, actually. Okay. You're right. We want to get monetized at some point. Yeah, we really do. That'd be great. (laughs) Yeah. On this topic of the Wendigo, though, there's, you know, kind of a rumor going around that the Wendigo is a cryptid. Now. I don't believe that's the case, but that belief is not without precedence. Well, ask me. Ask me what I think. Well, what do you think, Ashley? It's not a cryptid. Oh, what do you think it is? I mean, if you had to put it in a certain very specific category, where would you place the Wendigo? That doesn't have a that doesn't have an easy answer. Um, well, because, we don't like easy answers here. Well, I mean, you know, um, it it's a weird thing the wendigo in in name i believe is uh, you know a, a folk folklore folkloric creature mm-hmm. and uh to me those don't exist not that there can't be some things that do exist that have been kind of wrapped up into folklore because it, it can um but the wendigo 
and I think it's kind of one of those, but I think the name is just kind of a, a folklore thing. Now, the, the creature associated, not not the mental illness, not the possession, the spiritual side of it, the creature that is associated, that is allegedly the Wendigo, um, I would consider it some type of um, probably ultra-terrestrial. Okay. That would make sense. I could get with that. <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's fine. It will. We'll explain why eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, when it comes to the cryptid variation of the Wendigo, though, you could place it in kind of a different categories here because there is a type of Sasquatch known as the Wendigo with an I, not an E. And those are also referred to as the Genosqua, which I covered before. So it could be long in that category. Or if you want to look at the more Ashman affiliated theory. It could be those guys as well. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, you know, we, we, we have the, you know, the Sasquatch type, which, you know, obviously I think Bigfoot is a cryptid. Oh, definitely. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, because the there's no like one set Wendigo and that's another issue. Um, there's different types depending on, you know, the belief system for the tribes and whatnot. And so um, that makes it really hard to put it into one little box and just say, well, it's this. Um, but that's really the only way that I could see the Wendigo being a cryptid is if you were specifically talking about, um, you know, the Bigfoot known as Wendigo. Mm, that would make sense. Yes. But, you know, with that whole Ashman, the cave dweller theory, I think it could have a lot to do with that. You know, if you look at the descriptions of both the Ashman and the Wendigo, they line up pretty well. You know, they both have the very, very pale skin. They look emaciated, very aggressive in behavior. So, I mean, they could fall into the same group. You know, so that is something to look at. Now, if you look at the descriptions of Wendigo, though, I think really why the Wendigo has so many translations is really just artist depictions. You know, and none of these artists really saw the Wendigo personally. They're not drawing from experience. They're drawing from things that they've heard. It's all from hearsay. You know, so when yeah. you see the thing with the antlers, you know, that was never, ever described in the original Algonquian lore at all. It was more, it wasn't, it wasn't really antlers. It was more like the, the wood that they would disguise themselves with. So it was branches, not antlers. But there are things that have been seen that people said, oh, that's a Wendigo. That's a Wendigo. And that kind of perpetuated this whole misunderstanding. Well, um, you know, as much as the stag headed wendigo looks very badass and it does it's it's a very cool um looking looking creature um yeah, no you're right i mean it's not that's not what the wendigo has ever been described to look like and, and you know let's be honest here the wendigo is not normally described as as a physical being it's it's very it's mostly very much a spiritual thing yes very much so very and very much so it's a, a plaganoc actually Right. And so, I mean, whenever it does take a physical form, typically that physical form is, is in the way of, of, of possession. Mm -hmm. And so it would, you know, possess one of the, one of the tribes people. And, you know, then those people would then start taking on kind of a different shape. You know, they, they would start, you know, losing weight drastically <laughs> and losing all the color in their skin and, you know, having these sunken in eyes and these, you know, brittle, terrible fingernails and losing their hair. And I mean, mm -hmm. so, it, it you know that really is a, probably a, across the board i would say um you know within lore the most popular depiction uh, of, of the wendigo is just a you know really sickly looking person well i think the more popular one would be the whole stag headed thing i think the one where it's a person that looks sick and decaying i think that's something that's really not overlooked it's actually very much overlooked and it's something that people have to pay attention to because in Algonquian, Cree, even Ojibwe lore, you know, they describe them as pretty much just humans taking on a very bad form. And if anybody wants to associate it with any kind of media, I think the best one to look at would be that video game Until Dawn. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you played that yourself, Ashley, but the way they described the Wendigo and the way they presented it in the game is so very accurate. It's very impressive that they actually captured it so accurately. I've yeah I've never played it personally so I don't uh I don't know well we'll um, throw some pictures up on screen so everybody knows what we're talking about here but I'm pretty sure a lot of people have played it they know what I'm talking about when I talk about until dawn 
you know, but it's uh, very interesting, though, that so many things have been just convoluted with the Wendigo that they just turned it to something it's really not. Yeah. You know, I can yeah. understand where that comes from, though, because there are encounters that people have said, OK, this is the Wendigo. So this is what it looks like. But we're going to examine those today. Oh, uh huh. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, I want to surprise you. <laughs> what? Well, surprise. I, did, I want to surprise you. So in the first one we're going to start with is actually an encounter from 1912. So, and this actually happened in Ontario, Canada. Now, some natives that actually owned a farm up there began to see something that was not really too human-like. It was humanoid, but it was killing off the livestock. And because of the way it behaved and the way it actually just murdered these live animals, these cows, these horses, and it devoured them they automatically assumed Wendigo. And when they described it to other ranchers out there, they said it was a very tall, about 12 foot tall humanoid with long fingers, long claws. And as that story passed on, they started adding more and more features to it. And at one point, this thing was even seen wearing a horse's skull. Huh. Now, that might be where some of the derivative came from the whole stag-headed depiction of the Wendigo. But is that the original description, though? No, no. What they don't actually look at too often when they're talking about this encounter is the original encounter has always described a very human-like face. Now, they were bald, yes. It, so it was a hairless, very pale-skinned human being. But it was very animalistic in behavior. So what? you can see where I'm kind of going with this one. This is kind of more like the, uh, the ash men or the, the pale crawlers, as we call them sometimes, Ashley. So what, what, in what year did this sighting take place? Do you know? 1912. 1912. Okay. Um, well, a couple of things. Um, a, a thought entered my head here, and I'm going to sidetrack just a little bit, um, but you guys will enjoy it. Um, are you familiar with Pokemon? I am, yeah. Do you think I mean, Cubone could be a Wendigo? Ooh, you know what? That's a very good question. I didn't stop <laughs> to think about that. I know we didn't plan for this. I don't have the description for it, but you talked about this thing putting the, you know, a deer skull on its own head. And that's, I mean, that's what Cubone did, does, does, I guess, because there's multiple Cubones with skulls on their heads. And it's, it's well, I didn't even think about that before. That's all of its dead mother. Okay. Yeah. I'm a little impressed by that, Ashley. Okay. No, I didn't think <laughs> about that, but now I'm definitely going to start looking into it. You know, maybe it's, well, maybe well, it's possible well, it was inspired by the Wendigo. Well, well, I mean, well, yeah, and, and that makes sense. A lot of Pokemon are inspired by, you know, a lot of folklore creatures. Well, we'll, we'll bring that up again. What, you know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Cubone from the Pokemon could be a, inspired by the Wendigo? Um, going back that's, to the original sighting. That's though. interesting, though. I didn't even think about that. That's a good one, Ashley. I'm <laughs> impressed. Like, that was the first thought that came to my head. But, I tip my hat to you. <laughs> but um, going back to this, you're saying this this pale humanoid like thing that was bald is is attacking cattle mm -hmm. and attacking horses as well and it's just when you know when it attacks them it's devouring them it's basically just you know ransacking these poor animals and one time it was seen wearing a horse's skull so okay let's break it down I'll, I'll wait until i get to my next my next thing but let's talk about the horse's skull for a minute why do you think it would do that you know i have to wonder if maybe it was a way of uh creating some protection for itself. Like maybe it knew that the ranchers were going to try to protect their livestock. So it just thought, well, if I wear this, maybe they'll just see me passing by and not think anything of it. It's a primitive <laughs> thought. Uh, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a primitive thought. But if you really think about it, you know, I mean, if these things are living out in the wild, they're not going to have entirely human logic. Okay. <laughs> so wearing something like that might just very well offer it that sort of protection in its own mind. <laughs> no that's really cute um okay it could be i mean just some well i mean we, we wear helmets and things you know so you know to protect mm -hmm. our, our heads so maybe it could be like a physical well, form look of at protection. this way okay when you have things like that living out in the wild you know they, they're watching humans from a distance okay and they see us wearing hats they see us wearing helmets and you know doing all kinds of weird shit that humans do Who's to say they don't adopt some of those traits thinking they're doing it the right way, but they're really just going off in the wrong direction with this. He's just like, hey, it's my hat. <laughs> <laughs> and while the, uh, the horse's skull seems like a funny thing, is it really, though? Because not only would it offer protection in the sense of, like, you know, if they shot at it, but 
think about what kind of fear that would provoke too. If you saw something at night walking on two legs with a horse's head. It doesn't need a horse's head to be scary. It already is. Yeah, but you never know. I mean, maybe it's a another way of further advancing that fear. You know, like if they see this big, you know, 12 foot humanoid with a horse's head, they're going to just take off running, you know? So maybe there was some kind of fear at play here. <laughs> I just imagine it putting on the horse's head, the horse's skull. And it's like, I'm scary now. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> um, then that's probably, I probably shouldn't just use that to describe something like the Wendigo because this, these things are really hideous creatures, but yeah, these um, things are actually feared for a reason though. So we yeah, do have are. to keep no, that in mind when it comes to joking. Absolutely. And so, you know, anyway, so how do we know that I'll get back to more the more serious route here? How do we know that? Um, it, because you know what it sounds like to me is it sounds like, um, you know, a lot like cattle mutilation. So how do we know this thing wasn't an alien that that they had seen? You really don't. You know, and that's that's the funny thing about Wendigo is you can put it in different categories. You can put it in the, you know, interdimensional, ultra dimensional cryptid or even extraterrestrial you know anything is really not too far-fetched when it comes to wendigo mm -hmm. but you know i will say the one category it really doesn't belong into too much is the cryptid one i know i'm going to piss a lot of people off with that but well right that's what i'm saying i mean the the next logical step if somebody came to me and told me that encounter mm -hmm. um you know told, told me that the, you know the series of events and everything and you know what was going on and without any type of context automatically like as an investigator the very first thing I would start looking at, well, I mean, it was 1912, but I would start trying to track lights in the sky around the area. Mm -hmm. That'd be a you very know, good idea, actually. Because it's, I mean, that sounds a lot like, you know, what people get when in these cases of cattle mutilation. This and uh, aside from, you know, I don't think any of them have, have donned the, the corpse or, you know, anything. Um, it, you know, if it was a primitive people or, you know, a, a humanoid, an actual humanoid of some type, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it's got its reasons for putting on the horse head and, and of course, eating the animals, easy pickings, right? Yeah, I mean, it's that's predation. It's just, you know, it's being a predator and those are the prey. Right. So, right. And so, I mean, that's not, you know, too far fetched. But like I said, without context, the first thing that I would do is is look at it from a ufological perspective rather than right. anything else, first well, and foremost. You know, as far as it being coined a Wendigo, I mean, there's a very good reason for that is, you know, it was a very, very strong and potent belief. So anything that was seen as ravenous or inhuman or just plain out of the ordinary amongst a lot of the tribes, they automatically thought Wendigo. And when they uttered that name, you know, the fear just was like wildfire. It spread like mad. So if one person saw it and said, oh, it was a Wendigo, before you knew it, the whole tribe was like Wendigo, Wendigo, Wendigo. So that could be why it was aptly named Wendigo. It's just another form of, um, I mean, really a case of, of mass hysteria. Mm, yeah, I mean, you know, you get to look at the things that were associated with Wendigo. Sure. You know, I mean, like the the weather, the weather was a very big thing when it was a very brutal winter. Usually they assumed Wendigo or even like animals. Like if you looked at owls or porcupines, if they crossed those in the wild, they were afraid of them because those are both representatives of the Wendigo. Mm -hmm. You know, so you could see how like them seeing something that they're not used to seeing. They would be like, okay, this has to do with the Wendigo because it's inhuman, it's savage, it's killing these animals, and it's probably going to try to kill us. So it's the Wendigo. Okay. Well, okay. Um, I, I guess I don't have any other comments on that particular encounter. Did you have others that you, you wanted to share? I do. There's actually one from 2018. I know that's quite a, a jump with the time, but there was two brothers at a campground. Uh, Justin and John, they actually were at this old campground and the brothers witnessed a very tall, pale skinned humanoid creature in the woods. And they had no idea what it was, but they saw the yellow eyes. This thing was staring at them from a distance and it moved very animal like it moved about on all fours. And, you know, it was hiding behind the trees, hiding behind the bushes, and they said it seemed to be stalking them from a distance. Which, you know how humans are, Ashley. When we see an animal from a good distance away, we're going, oh, it's stalking us. Sure. Especially if it's something that we have never seen before. So they watch this creature very briefly. And strangely enough, rather than any attack, rather than any howls or roars being made, this thing just disappeared into the woods. And they've never seen it again. But these brothers were smart enough to go back to the camp counselors. 
and they told the camp counselors what they had seen. Now, of course, naturally, these camp counselors are like, okay, these are kids. They were out at night. Imagination's playing wild on them. Next day, they went to go look for this thing. Unfortunately, they never found any evidence of it. But the brothers to this day will maintain their story that what they saw was indeed a Wendigo. So, but why, why is it that they think it's a Wendigo? What about it made them jump to, are these people that you have talked to personally? No, 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 okay. no. This okay. is actually a, a story. So, you know, I think what made them think it was the Wendigo was just the, uh, the color of its skin. And I think the way that it moved, you know, I think when we see something out there, be it a cryptid or whatever, and we're not used to seeing them when they move, I, it registers to us as supernatural or abnormal, or it just doesn't belong. And I think that's the case here is, you know, it was just something they haven't seen before. And they're just kind of making a judgment call and their mind snapped mm -hmm. the Wendigo. Okay. Well, all right. I mean, I was just, I didn't know if there was anything in particular about it that made them think that. Um, so, you know, I just was curious. Well, when um, they described this thing, they said it had very, uh, very googly eyes, meaning the eyes were kind of rolling around in its head. That's weird. You know, and actually that's uh, one of the ways that sometimes Wendigo were described is that their heads were just kind of, their eyes were just kind of rolling around their heads and, you know, very uh, dull eyes, very evil looking eyes. You know, well, is this, that to say that this thing had evil eyes, though? Well, I guess yes and no. I mean, and people that are possessed by the Wendigo, I'd imagine, you know, that would that checks out. I mean. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you with the human symptoms of becoming Wendigo, I mean, their whole face changes you know their eyes their mouth even their voices change mm -hmm. so but it'll be something that we'll definitely discover in more detail in a later episode we'll go into more detail with the possession part of the wendigo sure sure now, i'm okay. a little worried to cover that part because i know there's a lot of very spiritual people out there and i don't want to offend anybody but if they want to learn more about the wendigo we're going to have to cover that that's okay well I, yeah i'm okay with it and i just hope everybody else is but <laughs> <laughs> you know you're, you're right i guess i can't to... i can't speak for them sorry you know I can't, I can't i can't speak for everybody when i say that it's okay um, well i but... think we'll find out they'll probably leave comments letting us you know you know yeah cover it or no don't cover it or no don't cover it yeah i mean uh, yeah let us know i mean if you're if, if if this aligns with your spiritual beliefs let us know if this is something that you are offended by or not offended by maybe you want the coverage um you know and 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 maybe we just shouldn't talk about it at all. I'm curious to see what the response will be. Um, oh, I'm very curious now. <laughs> I'm dying know. to see what it is. So we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, all right. So this twenty. Wh where did this sighting take place? This was actually in Wisconsin. Okay, that makes sense. Which is really interesting though, because there's a lot of cryptid sightings in Wisconsin. There is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think you know what I'm referring to. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of things. Yeah, there's um, a great number of things that come out of there. So, I mean, is it to say that there's no such thing as a Wendigo in Wisconsin? I think there's something running around that could be construed or misconstrued as a Wendigo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I is it the that. actual Wendigo itself? No, 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 no. Well, and that's what I'm saying, I guess. And that's that's where it gets kind of weird. I mean, it sounds like I'm arguing semantics and I kind of am. It's well, not you have to, I, though. You absolutely have to. Right. It's not, not that I don't think these guys didn't see something in 2018. It's that I, well, I think that what they saw was not a Wendigo. Right. Well, I mean, you're absolutely right, though, Ashley. You do have to argue semantics when it comes to Wendigo because there's a lot of details mm -hmm. that are either purposely ignored or just thrown aside for the favoritism of making it what they want it to be. And that's not really the right thing to do if you really want to research something. Yeah. And if you want the facts to be out there about something, you do have to put all the facts. You can't cherry pick. Right. You have to put every single thing that you can learn out there. Now, is that to say that we're going to know everything there is to know? Absolutely not. But what we can learn and what we can actually extract from history, we do have to put out there. Right. And I mean, I don't know what the Wendigo is. And what I mean by that is that I, a Wendigo has never knocked on my door and said, I'm a Wendigo and this is what I am. You I'll know? tell you what, if that happens, Ashley, I'm going to be incredibly jealous. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be furious. I will be to the point where I will be pulling out my hair and cursing your name and shaking my fist in the air. Because if anybody should beat the Wendigo, it's me. I should meet the Wendigo. I mean, you want to meet the Mothman, that's entirely on you. I don't care. I don't care for the guy myself. But, you know, if you want to meet him, fine, fine, fine. 
<laughs> I'll send I'll send them your way then. If the window comes knocking on my door, I'll send them your way. You know, but but no, I mean, I, obviously, again, I you know, I don't I don't know exactly what the window is, um, especially because it's hard again because there's so many different types of beliefs surrounding this thing mm-hmm. that they can't all possibly be true. Well, then again, you have to look at it and say, could they all possibly be wrong? I I don't believe so. I mean, I guess it would be safer to say that the Wendigo really is more of a spiritual belief. You know, if you look at certain men like, you know, Jack Fiddler, the uh, the Wendigo killer who we're going to cover in one of our episodes, you know, sure. that's heavy, heavy on Native American religious belief. And that's not really something that we can say, oh, it's not true. It's not real because I believe it is. I believe there's a lot more to it that we will never know personally. But there's something that they knew, and I definitely respect that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that it's, of course, the Wendigo is interesting. Um, it's not something that I ever had previously thought that I would have dug into. Um, mm-hmm. Thanks, Ryan. And it's- <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Does that mean I influenced you? I'm not going to say that on a pre-recorded line. Um, Mm. (laughs) Just saying. Um, You know, because to me, when you look at the, when you look at the facts behind it, uh, you know, what what we know and, and, and you add up kind of, um, you know, what the Wendigo is to me, it just sounds like it, it sounds very folklore and it sounds like it is just, um, logic and reasoning behind you know famine and cold weather and you know the self-destructive things that happen around those things and you know an easy out for possession you know when i don't really think that you know me personally i I don't think possession's a thing um and but you know that's just me maybe i don't and we've kind of talked about this before and i've talked about it before publicly like it's it's just something that I have never really seen any hardcore evidence for. Um, so therefore for me to just go, Oh, well, it's gotta be real because people say it is, I, I can't do that. You know, I just, that well, I wouldn't be no. very good. Nobody at my would job expect you to do that. You know, so. Okay. You well, know. That's a very fair point, but let's look at the other end of this whole cryptid misidentification thing though. Now sure. the Genosqua. Okay. Which you've heard me cover on a show with Josh. Okay. They were also known as Wendigo as well. So maybe there's a lot more to that aspect of the Wendigo mythology because Genosqua were known to hunt men and devour them. You know, so maybe in some way the Genosqua legend got morphed into something a bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people will tell you that they believe Sasquatch is a type of human. And I'm sure you've heard that plenty of times in the field, Ashley. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now if there's any truth to that, if Sasquatch is a type of human, then they've got to look the part in a way, right? Maybe way back when, that's what they saw, was they saw these human-like creatures out in the woods, you know, attacking other people. And that's where the more cannibal trait of the Wendigo came from, is they saw the Genosqua feasting on people and hunting people actively. And maybe it just got integrated into their spirituality somehow. And well, and that's kind of <clears throat> one thing you that you had even mentioned with the first sighting that you shared was that, you know, maybe one person caught it a Wendigo, so then everybody else just kind of followed suit mm-hmm. um, and didn't really question it, you know. So I, I could, I could, I mean, I, I could see how this could stem from other things that that could be a thing and kind of, you know, be the spinoff of the original claim. I kind of think that's what's going on. I really do. I think it's a lot of misinterpretation. I think there's a heavy part of spirituality. And I think it's kind of like a conglomeration of a few things. Yeah. You know, and that would make total sense. It really would. Yeah, you know, I'd but, agree with that. And that's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Not disputing whether or not people have seen these weird humanoid things at all. Um, I think that people have seen it. I just think that it's something beyond uh, when I think that when we try to call it a Wendigo and try to reason away that it's Wendigo, mm-hmm. that we're missing the mark and we're doing it, a, a you know, a disservice by doing that. Right. Well, an interesting aspect to look at, too, is the uh, the ash men that we're always talking about, the pale humanoids. You know, in a way that could be a very, very heavy influence for the creation of the Wendigo itself, too, because, I mean, if they are humans, right? Think about how people would have felt seeing these things way back when. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
we as cryptozoologists, Ashley, if we were to see one right now, we'd think it was a terrifying thing. Oh, yeah. You know, we'd be excited, sure, but we'd be terrified at the same time. So maybe these people way back when, before cryptozoology was even a thing, before we even started talking about this stuff, maybe they were running into them in the wild and they saw, oh my God, they're humans. You know, they're eating other people. They're killing people purposely. And maybe that's where the whole Wendigo myth really kickstarted. Sure. You know, because the way they describe the Wendigo itself, you know, it's like, it's so parallel with these pale crawlers, these pale humanoids that you got to kind of merge them together in a way. Yeah. They intersect so strongly. Yeah. You know, if something intersects like that, if they're, if it gels together like that does, you definitely cannot ignore that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, you know, because it is something that's reported, you know, across the board with consistent reports. And so therefore, you know, the, to me, that's the part that lends credibility to it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're probably when we call it a Wendigo, we're probably wrong. When we call it, a, a, you know, an Ashman, we're probably wrong. We call it a pale, yeah. <laughs> pale crawler. We're probably wrong. You know, we, we're probably so far off the mark. It's just we're just not even close to even having any kind of understanding of what these things are. Um, <clears throat> you know, which makes sense. What about the Dover demon? You know, actually that's funny. Cause I was just going to bring that one up. Yeah. You know, and I don't know, I've always thought the Dover demon was more along the lines of an extraterrestrial. Okay. You know, with the way that it was seen so randomly and then the sightings just stopped. I always kind of figured that maybe what happened is this thing was like a extraterrestrial that was left behind. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And it just eventually either A, passed away, or B, was picked up by its people. I know that sounds fanatical, but then again, maybe it doesn't. I mean, look who I'm talking to. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, but do you think, I mean, you know, just even looking at, you know, that classic drawing of the Doper Demon, I mean, doesn't that kind of look like a small humanoid with those weird yellow eyes? Yes, very much so. Very, very much so. And it actually reminds me of another thing that people are going to hate me for mentioning this. Another thing that's not really a cryptid, in fact, is entirely made up is the rake. Oh, God. Yeah, you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? No, I didn't. Not, not yet. I, I mean, I knew it now. I didn't know it when, we, when I agreed to record with you, but apparently Ryan wants us to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead about the rake. Well, see, what people are forgetting about the rake, right, is this thing started to show up on, you know, creepypasta forums, on 4chan, places like that. And it wasn't until that story dropped on YouTube in different places that everybody else started seeing the rake. And it's just, it's very interesting that once there was reddits about the rake, you know, just one story and then a made up story, which somebody actually did say that they wrote the story. And even despite the fact that somebody wrote it, which meant they created it, right? People started believing it and people started seeing the rake. Everybody and their uncle was suddenly seeing the rake. And it's just, it really just kind of confused me because it's like, okay, how do you know you're not seeing something else? Right. You know, you could be seeing the Ashmen while you're out there and calling it the rake. So it's another case of misidentification. Well, when, when the when the rake story was created and it, and it was created, there's an author. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize we we're going to talk about this or I would have, I would have dug up my notes on this. I've, I've looked way too deeply into the rake situation. Um, but, you know, when the author came out with it, he also created a website to specifically report rake sightings. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he did it because he knew how the Internet was and he knew that people would get on there and just fake report. So... so Basically, it was a social experiment is what it was. Pretty much. I mean, it's just, it, it's like an ARG, you know, it was kind of an early, an early form of, of ARG. And, um, right. you know, when he, you know, then that's what he did. He gets on there, he creates this website, he encourages people to report their sightings on this website. People are doing it. Um, but of course, he's spreading it in problematic areas like 4chan and Reddit, where trolling is very much a thing and mm -hmm. very popular in those groups. Um, you know, so anything that was it's, it sucks and i hate to say it this way but <clears throat> anything that was reported to that website i don't take as credible and here's the thing about it is that <laughs> you most likely did have people that did have genuine sightings of this weird humanoid thing mm -hmm. 
and they went online to look up pale humanoid thing or whatever and they found the rake and they went oh, that's what i saw and they didn't right. really you know they, they're traumatized by their sighting so they didn't dig it up and maybe they even reported reported it to that website again you know then that you know it's just going to be one of those sightings that literally gets lost in the void because we can't do anything with it because mm -hmm. of the story and how much it has kind of ruined the credibility of these things it didn't help either though that the the most well-known photo of the rake was actually nothing more than viral marketing for a video game right yeah you know so when people throw that photo at me i'm just going yeah that's that's marketing for a video game guys that doesn't count you can't count that that was yeah. made up in a, a photoshop lab most likely you know so you can't say that's actual evidence no it's not it's a video game right so i think people are seeing something out there that does resemble the rake the wendigo it resembles it but it's not it you know so these sure. pale humanoids they're not the rake okay because when you read the rake stories the rake was a murderer you know it killed everybody it ran into you know and according to one of the original stories too it had quite the uh profound spiritual impact on one guy you know he was so scared of it that he wouldn't return to the states because of this thing you know, so when people are seeing something, I don't think it's the rake. I think it's just these pale humanoids, which goes full circle back to the Wendigo. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, right. And, you know, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think that stories of like the rake and us continuing to, you know, because you'll have other people within the community that are like, well, but just because they call it the rake and we know the rake's a creepypasta doesn't mean that we can just discredit these people. Well, I mean, kind of. Um you know, it kind of does. Again, the rake was bred specifically to troll the internet. That was the point. Mm -hmm. Like Slenderman. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we did a, the Slenderman episode over on the, uh, on Wednesdays We Talk Weird show. And I had people message me and they were like, well, I think Slenderman's real. And I'm like, okay, but it's not. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very it's interesting not. concept, though. I mean, that's something that we should probably discuss on the show sometime is these made up, quote unquote, cryptids. Yeah. Well, right, and and I agree with that. I th I think that that would be a really good um idea for a, a show topic, um, you know, because we I mean I kind of posed a philosophical question of well, you know, eventually the Slender Man led to this this attempted murder of this twelve year old child. It's kind of ironic because Slender Man kills kids, right? So in a way, did it kind of manifest itself? Um, you know, not really. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I understand the middle gym, gymnastics to get there. I'm the one that posed the idea, but do I really <laughs> think that? No. Um, I just think that some kids were obviously, well, the one girl has really severe schizophrenia. So, I mean, oh, you know. <laughs> now that detail I did not know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of the, <clears throat> right. So, I mean, you know, and she just kind of the other girl just kind of followed along because she was meek and wanted a friend. And, you know, it's it's really that simple. Um, and, you know, so in the case of the rake, again, you know, like I said, it's hard. I do think some people get it confused. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because creepypasta, the whole point of creepypasta is to look, it's like found footage, but stories on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah. You basically, know, like, yeah. I mean, and you saw people to this day that insist that like the Blair Witch Project was real. You know what I mean? And it, it never, like, it never was. There's never, none of it was ever real, ever. <laughs> you, know? you know? I have to admit, when I was younger, though, I did believe it was real. I did too. And I was so disillusioned when I saw the actors on TV. I was like, wait a minute. You're supposed to be dead. How are you on TV? I was, so, I was very disenchanted when I found out it was fake. I think I was a little bit heartbroken. I couldn't watch it for many, many years. And even now, as an adult, if I watch it, sometimes it creeps me out does it yeah. what I mean, part of it creeps you out um i don't like the end credits okay why is that not the, not the end scene but like the actual end credits like i don't whatever oh you don't like the silent credit roll <laughs> yeah but the weird noises i don't like that it bothers me like the little metallic sounds in the background yeah i don't like that when i was uh when, when it came out we rented it on pay-per-view and back in the day when you you know you, you had to rent things on pay-per-view if you wanted to see or you, you just go to the aged video yourself store. right there <laughs> yeah i know right so <laughs> pay-per-view remember that guys um you know but yeah you, you had to rent things you could rent things on your tv kind of but so mm -hmm. you'd have access to it for the next 24 hours maybe a weekend pass whatever and uh usually what you would do if you spent money on pay-per-view something you would watch it the entire weekend Mm -hmm. yep i remember doing so, that right so my family gets blair witch project and we all like kind of have like a sleepover in the living room and it played 
all weekend long, all day, <laughs> all night. And so I don't know. And now <laughs> the, the watching the end credits, it scares me. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Now I know what to do. Make you go quiet. When I want you to quiet, I'll just play the end credits. That's me. <laughs> Why would you do It'll that? It'll work. It's productive. That's it's terrible. Productive. <laughs> it's funny you brought up the Blair Witch though, because you know, I had a debate with somebody a while back. They were trying to tell me that in the movie, the Blair Witch herself was actually supposed to be a Wendigo. And I couldn't figure out how they arrived at that. Yeah. You know, and they were saying because, you know, she had magical powers and she could shape shift and all this. And I'm still going, yeah, but how is that a Wendigo though? Right. You know, it's because she's not eating these people from the movie. I mean, remember what she did to Josh, you know, she was pulling his teeth out and whatnot. You know, so I'm like, she's not eating these people. She's just messing with them. How's that a Wendigo? <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I mean, it, that's not, that's not even, that's not even... I mean, even calling her a witch is a far stretch, you know. So yeah, no, and you know that movie alone, that was actually that was based on the uh, the Wood Witch. I don't know if you ever read that. No, I thought she was based off the Bell Witch. No, it's a little bit of the Bell Witch, but it's more the the Wood Witch. Mm -mm, I don't know nothing about that. It's very interesting. It's an old, old, old graphic novel, and they pulled a lot of the details that you saw in Blair Witch from that. Huh. I think I have a copy of it somewhere. I'll have to send it to you very interesting no i had no idea um mm -hmm. no i mean I, I would think that blair witch would be more of like a demonic entity than anything yeah i mean i guess like you know if you're going to think of it as a demonic entity and that's what you drop when to go into i guess i could see running parallels yeah but you can't just you know be like oh well she's messing with their minds so she's a when to go no there would have to be certain things that she's doing or certain goals that she had in order to fall into that when to go category you know if she's not planning on cannibalizing these three four students then that's not Wendigo. Right. Well, even, well, that's true. Even then, a Wendigo can only cannibalize a person if it is possessing a person. Well, in a way, I mean, you know, if you look at a Swift Runner, that's somebody that we are going to have to cover heavy next Wendigo episode. You know, he was allegedly possessed by the Wendigo, but he did kill his family. You know, okay. He murdered his his wife, his kids, and his mother in law. So, <laughs> well, right. But if an, if a Wendigo, and let's say the Wendigo, like the pale humanoid type creature, eats someone, that's not cannibalism. Well, no, I guess not. But <laughs> right, the only way it's cannibalism is if the Wendigo is possessing a human, and then that human eats somebody. This is true, unless those pale crawlers are related to humans in any way. They would have to be human, yeah. Yeah, right. and so uh, you know we, we'd have to assume. Anyway, that's just again semantics. Tomato, tomato. You know, <laughs> whatever. We get into those a lot on this channel, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. And well, I mean, okay, and that's kind of what we were. This whole episode is, is going a little off the rails. That's fine. That's what makes it fun. Um, you know, but we're kind of talking about whether or not this well, is. You a, know, what, a to be honest with you, Ashley, I didn't want to have just like too serious of a pilot episode. I just wanted to kind of like give everybody the feel of how we do things. And, you know, we like to joke around. We like to have fun. And we go off on different avenues because we talk about everything. So, yeah, I mean, I, listen, listen, you guys, I understand you guys like the spooky, scary stories and stuff like that. That's fine. Um, this stuff can be scary. I mean, it, it absolutely can be. Um, again, if, if, if Wendigos are real, I don't want to meet one. Part you know. of me does. Part of me doesn't. But no. <laughs> You're not supposed to be able. That's another thing about some of these sightings. People that live to, to, to tell, tell the tale. They're not really. You're not supposed to. You can't. You can't. There's a very specific set of things you have to do in order to survive a Wendigo attack. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and again, that's something we should probably we'll, cover as well. We'll get on there. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. But you know, with the even these sightings that you mentioned, were those things done? No, not at all. And that's what really sets them apart. Is kind of like you know, you're looking at these going, oh, cause it just it went away. You know, like in the case of Justice and Jonathan, you know, it just stared at him for a few moments before disappearing into the woods. It just makes me wonder, why would that be a Wendigo, though? It didn't do anything. It didn't try anything. Right. That's not what Wendigo do. Right. And I mean, if it wanted those boys and it was a Wendigo, it would have done what it had to do to get them. Or so I would think anyway. You're right. I mean, so that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't track, you know, that doesn't it, it just doesn't make sense um not again not to say that these guys didn't see something mm -hmm. just that whatever it was that they saw doesn't align with traditional when to go right when to go right i will and, say i believe they saw something right was it a when to go no but there was definitely something that they had seen that night because they maintain their story to this day 
For sure. You know, and they, they don't try to add any crazy details. There's no, you know, over dramatization of anything. So when somebody does that, as you've learned too, Ashley, when there's no dramatization of things, they're probably telling the truth. If they're not going right. to add all this glitz and glamour, they're probably telling the truth. Right. It just is what it is. I saw this thing. That's what it is. Yeah. It cut out. We cut out. End of story. So, you know, that right there, it, it kind of makes me believe them. It does. I don't believe it was the Wendigo. I do think it was a pale humanoid for sure. Maybe something very, very similar to the Dover Demon. You know, I'd maybe like another one of his them. species. Well, we'll have to try to get a hold of them. I think that would be neat. Um, you know, so that one I don't think. But, you know, bringing it back to, you know, is the Wendigo cryptid? Well, no, it's not. No. Ryan, do you know why it's not a cryptid? Yeah, because it, it's not an unknown animal. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, that's another thing that really it's been lost to time here is the true definition of cryptid. And it's cryptid, guys, with an ID, not IC, not cryptic, cryptid. Cryptid. So since I said that part, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Why don't you tell them the definition of a cryptid, Ashley? <laughs> well, thank you. I'll, I guess I'll I'll take out the soapbox now. Um, yeah, you know, cry cryptozoology is the study of of unverified animals. And what, when we say unverified, what mean what we mean by that? is unverified scientifically mm -hmm. so while we might have some anecdotal evidence or even other smaller pieces of evidence not just an anecdotal evidence it's just stories of people seeing these things um you might get other evidence like footprints or pictures or maybe even back when the the, the term was coined um, hair samples and things like that um, it right. hasn't been ran through the typical scientific method to prove that this thing is a part of our animal kingdom to right. fit into the animal kingdom and you know but that's that's it um, did you see an alien cool you didn't see a cryptid there you go were you haunted for 20 years by your aunt Marsha cool that's not a cryptid <laughs> did you see the wendigo cool that's not a cryptid guys right. um you know it, it it just it doesn't fall in in a biological it doesn't make sense with our classical science and it has to track with that now i'm not saying because i'm the last person that would tell you this <laughs> that there isn't some type of hidden science that we don't know about because mm -hmm. there is but, um, you know, cryptozoology is, is a lot simpler than a lot of people make it out to be. And, you know, I'm again, this isn't me saying that you didn't see that Bigfoot that disappeared in thin air. I'm not saying that Nessie isn't a ghost. <laughs> because she could be. <laughs> a phantom wolf. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Actually, that's a term that's thrown around quite a bit, Ashley. I know, but it's just fucking ghost. Just say ghost, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not supposed to be. I'm, I'm, I'm have a potty mouth. I'm a bad. <laughs> um, phantom old Jesus. Anyway, um, new terms. All, all this, all this terminology. But no, cryptozoology is just the study of, of unknown animals. Everything, every animal that we know today, at some point in time has always ever been considered a cryptid until we classify it until we bag it and tag it basically let's give them some examples though of what animals were once known as cryptids and i think you know maybe i can clear it up a little bit for some of these guys mountain gorillas guys mountain gorillas were once considered cryptids mm -hmm. you know duck-billed platypus they were mm -hmm. cryptids at one time now what does the platypus and the gorilla have in common they're both animals so can Both you put the animals. Wendigo in the same category as a gorilla? No, because Wendigo is far more on the spiritual spectrum. It's yeah, not really I, flesh and blood too, too, too much, especially because the Wendigo is said to take over a human. It's not an animal taking over a human. So therefore, not a cryptid. I've never heard of a platypus possessing a human. But uh, you know what? In this, in this field, I wouldn't be surprised if the claim comes out one day. Man, imagine how cool that would be if it's like men in black. Dude's face opens up and there's a little duck built platypus with the controls. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about the pug in men in black. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it oh, yeah, that, makes like sense. that too. You never know. <laughs> it's a crazy world out there, man. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. okay. I'm not going to discount anything, you know, but, uh, you know, the, the, um, you know, the giraffe. Yeah. The giraffe. You know how crazy the guy sounded when he came back and he said, hey, guys, there's a camel there and it's got a really long neck. 
Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, what? Panda bears. Panda bears, too. Panda bears. Um, the Okapi is a very recent one. Mm-hmm. Coelacanth. Um, the coelacanth, yeah. The coelacanth is, is going to... That one's a little bit different because it's uh, in the extinct category. It's literally a, a dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, that would be more like, I think, the uh, the Lazarus taxon. Well, that's still it's, that's still considered a, a cryptid. I like that part of cryptozoology. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but but yes, cryptids are animals. They're just animals. It's I mean, it's 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 that easy. Is it an animal? No, no. no. Then it's not a cryptid. Right, and it's not a cryptic either. <laughs> it's not a cryptic. <laughs> it's it might be a cryptid a, a cryptic cryptid, but uh, no, it's it's not. No, that's not what these things are. Uh, Wendigo are they don't fall in that um you know and here's the thing is that if if you want to try to argue that again like i was saying that there's hidden science that we don't know about but these things live live amongst us Mm -hmm. that's great that's still not a cryptid no i mean if you want to really look really deep into the wendigo though that's it's shamanism spiritualism you know, so it, it can't be something that we say is an animal, that it's something that we're going to discover in the forest one day. It's not going to happen that way. You're not going to drag a Wendigo to the zoo and put it on display. Yeah, we're never going to go to the Bronx Zoo and, you know, have pictures taken with a Wendigo or its baby or anything like that. Right. It, it's one of those things that we as a people may never actually see one on one, but they certainly had run ins with something way back in the day. Can you imagine a Wendigo breeding program? I don't want to imagine that, actually. <laughs> That is the stuff of nightmares. How do you know? Maybe um okay, I'll talk to you about it later. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um yeah. So like we were talking about, yes, I mean, right, exactly. You know, these again, just because it's not a cryptid doesn't mean that there's nothing to it, just that it just doesn't fall in line with cryptozoology. That's fine. Right, right, right. I mean, I know a lot of people are gonna be angry at hearing that, but I have my reasons. Ashley has her reasons. So if you actually were to ask us individually, we could tell you all our reasons and you'll understand. Well, we're in, well, and some people try to say, well, but, you know, cryptozoology is a, is a, it, it, you know, you can, it's up to the individual to decide. Um, no. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's well, not. There's something um, else to consider too, though. I mean, in a very, very big way, when you're taking the Wendigo and you're morphing it to what you want to be, you're actually showing a great deal of disrespect to the people that hold this in their religious regard. Oh, and absolutely. That's, that's something to consider. You know, I don't want to make any poor facsimiles here, but that would be like if they started using something from other people's religious belief, you know, a big character from there and they made him a, a superhero or whatever. People would be very insulted by that. Yeah. You know, so when you're taking the Wendigo and you're dropping it into scenarios that the Wendigo wouldn't be in, or you're describing it as, one thing when really the original Algonquian tales are so much different, you're very much disrespecting the people that believe in this thing. Right. You know, as a researcher, as somebody that really has dug deep into this and spoken to actual Native Americans about their spiritual belief, I'm actually offended in a way too, because, you know, it's like they're taking your religion and making fun of it. So that's something we have to be careful of. Right, which isn't okay. I mean, you know, what if what if people, you know, if you if you were a Christian, what if people, you know, maybe you don't identify with Christianity, but let's just pretend that you're a Christian, mm-hmm. and people are going around saying that, um, you know, that they um, saw Jesus and Jesus killed their brother, right, or their dog or something. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's <laughs> maybe that's extreme. But it's the same thing. I mean, you're you're taking someone's spiritual belief and you are inserting it into a, a story, which in general, first of all, don't lie. Don't tell these weird fan. I mean, just don't tell these weird stories if they didn't really happen to you. Um, you know, that's just there's other ways to get attention. Um, but, you know, second of all, like, gosh, if we're going to do it, just say like, yeah, I saw a Bigfoot cross the street one day. Like, yeah, there you go. Don't do the whole I was stalked by a Wendigo. Right. Don't do that. You know, it's it's not that's not cool, you guys. It's it's really not. And you know, if there is any type of of trueness to these these people's belief system, um, you know, they they definitely um, you know, believe in uh, some type of karma, and you mm-hmm. don't want that on you. You know, it's just not good juju. <laughs> definitely but, not. 
but yeah, I mean, you know, again, you, you and, and then also, I mean, calling uh, Wendigo a cryptid, it, it's also disrespectful to cryptozoology. Um, yeah, it is actually in a very big way, yeah. Because the whole point, the whole reason why why Hoovelmans, Bernard Hoovelmans, and, and Ivan T. Sanderson, which if you don't know who these people are and you're interested in cryptozoology, you absolutely need to start there. Right. Um, because they're like, the the daddies they're the daddies mm-hmm. of cryptozoology you know when they made this term they came up with cryptozoology as a term the whole reason for it was so that way cryptozoology could be taken seriously so that way we could actually give credible science and and shy away from using terms like monster when describing right. things like sasquatch um you know and so when you just kind of lump the unknown into cryptozoology in general that's not what that's not what the point of it was the point of it was was to define it and have guidelines for this so that it could be looked at in a scientific way right right so I think I really mean, when it comes to the wendigo though with the science we have right now we just can't examine it too 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 much we can form theories ideas even come up with some beliefs but will we actually prove that the wendigo is a real thing no no i think that's the best left to spirituality to do yeah I, I well i'd agree with that you know probably not in this lifetime not until we start listen not until we create guidelines like who and sanderson did mm-hmm. and we start getting this take looking you know we start getting this taken seriously <laughs> well hopefully none of this offends anybody i mean we're not trying to be crude here guys we're just trying to drop some facts well, and you know that's that's the thing about it. You know, a lot of people that that will listen to the show are fans of it, and I think that one thing that people forget as fans is that there are people like Ryan and myself who this is this is our career, like this is our job. We genuinely believe in these things and think mm-hmm. that they should have scientific like shit on them. Yep, absolutely. And in order to do that, you can't just go. Well, I think it's this, and that's that. Throw your hands up and go. Ah, that's what it is that's not what it is you know there's yeah, there's a method that you have to follow to get it taken seriously yeah there is um, a process that you have to follow right and you know so i mean if i'm going to you know stand on my soapbox and say that i believe that bigfoot exists then that means that i also believe that bigfoot deserves conservation and in order mm-hmm. to do that we have to classify it correctly correct correct and you know and that's just one little teeny tiny example so i mean yeah it's it's not to to be pretentious it's not to you know just be difficult or argumentative um you know it's because as individuals we are trying to start a a movement within the scientific community and and actually get it somewhere and if you guys are really big fans of this stuff then you should also share that passion of wanting to see it go somewhere besides just telling spooky stories on the internet because these people Mm -hmm have these very real encounters and these very real experiences um you know this isn't just fantasy for them it's it's real and it should be taken seriously i agree i agree 100 percent. but we are coming up on an hour here so before we bring this to a close we should tell them what we have in store for the next episode sure well we're gonna have my old friend matt squatch presents come on and we're gonna bat around some different ideas about cryptids paranormal ufos I've been waiting to talk to Matt for a very, very long time. I'm very excited about this. I know it's the first time you're going to meet him, though. But it is, yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to like the guy. He's a he's very popular amongst our people, as we would say. What do you mean, our people? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he seemed nice. I talked to him for a minute to schedule the show, and and you know, he, he seems like a nice guy, and it, it'll be. It'll be exciting to kind of, um, you know, sounds like we have very similar views on things. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think that I think that it'll, it'll go over well. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it's gonna be a great show. And just to let everybody know, we will be uploading new episodes every Sunday. So you can expect that. Yeah, every Sunday, 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 Sunday. <laughs> you got to do the dramatic voice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We need to make a commercial and it's Monster Radio as like a monster truck rally. <gasps> that is ingenious anyway you go wait for that to come out guys you're gonna love it <laughs> oh we're, we're doing it we're definitely <laughs> yeah. doing that guys she just yeah. gave me an idea we're doing it we're i'm running with it totally totally doing it you know and maybe you know i'm sure you've heard ryan people that are over here because you listen to my show you already know what to expect from me i'm a heathen um ryan conducts himself a lot more maturely than i do um you know the show isn't 
going to whoa, be. Whoa, 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 you're dropping insults now? What's this maturely stuff? Oh, stop it. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to start throwing barbs. Oh, okay. Ouch. Mature. <laughs> Well, you didn't tell my joke at the beginning, so I, you know, anyway. I've been called a lot of things before, Ashley, but never mature. <laughs> well, but you're more, you've done a lot more mature, you've done a lot more mature shows and settings and things like that. And that's what people are used to from you. Um, not that we can't, you know, talk about these things in a serious light, but, you know, why, why do it if we don't love it, right? Why not make it fun? Right. We're going to have fun with it. Right. I mean, you're, you're definitely, you're not going to get as much as you will on my show. My show is not primarily, I mean, it's on YouTube, but it's not primarily on YouTube. So I don't, I don't have any censorship. Right. Um, (laughs) for one. And, uh, you know, so we, and we definitely want to make this kind of our own thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're going to be here. We're going to be, you know, we're going to have fun about it. It's not meant to be disrespectful towards anybody and anybody's beliefs or or anything like that. Oh no, Um, we're entirely open to people too. I mean, if you guys want to drop some ideas or just talk to us about stuff, you know, hit us up in comments, drop some comments for the video. We'll talk to you. We're very nice. Um, most of the time, most of the time. I'm nicer than Ryan. It, it's true she is it's very true I, I was surprised i was expecting some resistance <laughs> no, i'm not gonna lie i mean you know what's the <laughs> point you're gonna prove me wrong eventually and i'm gonna be like oh man that was a crude comment i was mean to that guy. damn it ashley was right <laughs> you know but yeah no we're, we're we're very nice we're very open and receptive to your feedback um but yeah i mean again you know i, I you know i made some jokes in the beginning there and and um you know, again, it's it's not made to be disrespectful. Just um, you, you gotta have fun with it, and that's that's you what I believe do. in, and that's why I like I mean, to do it. This is our jobs, you know. I mean, we gotta have fun with our jobs, otherwise we get bored, you know. So, it is what it is. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But okay, well, that that was my that was my uh, lots of soapboxing tonight. Hey, that's okay. I'm sure the people will enjoy it. <laughs> okay, they will. Well, that's, that's all. All I right, got. so we're gonna let you people go. And we will see you soon.